the elimination of a single viewing point the abandonment of formal traditional perspective and a dense clustering of penetrating planes are the characteristics of a cubist work said by the author peter de francia cubism was one of the most influential visual art styles of the twentieth century its liberating concepts even influenced the dada and surrealist movements the underlying belief of cubism is that the artistic images are independent of reality cubism emphasized two-dimensionality and rejected traditional techniques cubist artists used techniques like perspective modeling and foreshortening they tried to represent a 3d object on a 2d canvas and represent these objects through distortion rather than directly imitating them Cubism broke objects into their components and put them back together on one plane so the viewers could see all the sides at once. In addition, Cubists rejected the prior belief that art should copy nature. Cubism sought to differentiate forms and accommodate shifting sources of light. Some other common characteristics in Cubism are that the painting lacks perspective and employs many geometric forms. Many Cubist paintings also restrict the use of color and manipulate visual appearances. Cubism rejected the 500-year-old idea that painting was like a window. Cubist art has more conceptual and subjective paintings that sought to represent the underlying structure of existence. There were two main forms of Cubism, analytic and synthetic. Analytic Cubism, also called Hermetic Cubism, began around 1908 and went until 1910. In 1910, Synthetic Cubism began and ran until 1919. Analytic Cubism describes the process of fractioning forms and then rearranging the elements so that objects are displayed and the pictorial space is flattened. Objects were usually able to be distinguished during Analytic Cubism. Pablo Picasso and George Brock used a technique called papier collet during this time. This technique used large pieces of neutral colored paper that alluded to a particular object and were then pasted together. Beginning around 1910 to 1912, a second phase of cubism called synthetic cubism began. Picasso and Brock pioneered this new phase of cubism and moved it more towards abstractionism. They frequently used 3D geometrical shapes. During this time, cubist art was abstracted to just overlapping planes. Colors were almost non-existent, and synthetic cubist painters used mainly black, gray, brown, and other subtle tones. Motifs and symbols were used often, some of which being letters, bottles, and the human figure. However, landscapes were rarely attempted. In addition to the system of labeling the phases of cubism analytic and synthetic, some also label the phases as early, going from 1906 to 1910, high, from 1910 to 1912, and late, from 1912 on. The beginning of cubism was influenced by a few artists. Picasso and other cubist artists were influenced by Gustave Colbert and Paul Cezanne. Colbert influenced Cezanne, and Cezanne influenced Picasso and Brock. Paul Cezanne, from 1839 to 1906, painted in a form called profound realism and painted solid objects and landscapes that influenced the beginning of Cubism. Cezanne also influenced Cubism in the way he distorted the forms of objects and made their planes intercept. His geometric compositions led Brock to simplify his facetted forms. Cezanne's work was seen as a connection between Courbet's realist paintings and the beginning of Cubism. Cezanne searched to create new forms and colors that were different from Impressionism, which was a major art movement that came right before Cubism. Impressionists moved away from realism and were interested in light and abstract ideas. However, Cezanne kept painting in realist style and was not greatly influenced by the Impressionist paintings. Cubism is different from Cezanne's work because Cezanne tried to show an understanding and clarity in his pictures, which Cubism does not generally do. On the left, you can see examples of paintings done by Paul Cezanne, and on the right, you can see two paintings done by Pablo Picasso during the Cubism art movement. 
Cubism is believed to be created by Picasso and Braque between the years of 1906 and 1908. They independently invented this revolutionary style of painting. For Braque, Cubism was a great discipline. It saw priority and near abstraction very much in tension with his innate tendency towards expressive and figurative. He was a revolutionary and a conservative. His paintings were an evolving, constantly revised statement of his ideas concerning the nature of art. Prague began his career by painting Impressionist paintings and by 1906 he began painting in a Fauvist style. Although some of the Cubist artists had previously been a part of the Fauvism moment, Fauvism and Cubism are very different. Cubism focused on real things and being able to see them from all point of view, while Fauvism focused on bright colors and feelings. In the summer of 1908, Brock painted several Cubist landscapes, which were rare in Cubism. Some examples were Road Near Les Talk, Terrace at Les Talk, and Viaduct at Les Talk. In September of 1908, Brock submitted six or seven canvases to the Saloon du Ton, but all were rejected. One of the jurors, Matisse, said that one of the paintings was made of small cubes and this is traditionally taken to be the origin of the term cubism. In 1909, he made a trip to Le Havre and painted Harbour in Normandy, which shows how he had grasped the essence and potential of the cubist technique. On his return to Paris in the autumn, Braque experimented with sculpture and produced Head of a Woman, his first attempt to transfer cubism into round. Braque first introduced lettering the year in 1909 through 1910 into cubism paintings and this served both to emphasize the picture surface as letters have no special depth and to make the point the cubist painting like language relies on signs in order to communicate. In 1911, the year in which Brock spent time with Picasso, he held his first exhibition showing 15 paintings at the little gallery ran by Clovis. Picasso and Brock were asked many times to give a statement or explanation about their cubist works, but they declined because Brock wanted his art to speak for itself and show his ideas, and Picasso avoided talking too much about cubism itself. 1912 was also the year in which collages came into cubism, but Brock never made any collages because the nature of the cubist collage was to abstract and he preferred a more classical approach where everything he put together was in harmony. Brock used symbols that had unique surfaces like wood grains called fake wood. He also used house painters' combs to create a look of grains of wood. He was the first one to use this technique in Cubism. Brock invented papier coas, pieces made by posting colorful papers together. He waited to begin using this new technique until Picasso was away so that he has the first mark on Cubism with the papier coas. Some examples of Brock's first works with this new technique were fruit dish and glass in 1912 with charcoal and pasted paper and violin and glass from 1912 to 1913 with oil, charcoal, and pasted paper. Around 1912 through 1913, Brock introduced two signature objects that are seen in many of his paintings, like grapes and heart-shaped lips. Grapes are also seen in Fruit Dish Ace of Clubs of 1913. Brock fell away from painting in his early Cubist style when he served in the World War I in 1914 through 1915. During the last year of the war, Brock moved into a phase of synthetic Cubism with planes arranged decoratively which paralleled Picasso's work of the past three years. In 1919, Brock held a successful exhibition where the exhibition served to confirm his reputation as a leading modernist. He then moved into a classical phase in the 1920s where he painted a series of paintings of Greek-inspired female figures bearing flowers and fruits. A special room was devoted to Brock's work in the Salon du Ton of 1922 in the honor of his 40th birthday. 
In the 1930s, Brock's reputation had become international. His first large-scale retrospective was staged at the Kunsthalle in 1933. In 1948, he exhibited at the Venice Biennale, where he was awarded the first prize for painting. Brock once stated that he saw Cubism as a means to put painting within the reach of my own gifts. At the age of 15, Picasso was an artistic prodigy and a well-rounded figurative painter. Picasso's paintings can be classified in two main categories. Picasso's blue period from 1901 through 1904 used blue tones and included themes like despair, loneliness, and poverty. In his rose period, Picasso's paintings used warmer colors like red and showed excitement, carnivals, and performance. After Picasso moved to the artist quarter in Paris, he met many writers and this atmosphere influenced his paintings. Throughout his paintings, Picasso used geometry to create paintings that were in abstract in essence. Picasso only included enough signs of the real world to supply a tension between realities outside of the painting. Art is a lie that makes us realize the truth. This quote by Picasso is apparent in Momath Cubism, in which the compositions are deliberately manipulated to create visual and intellectual puns and to comment on the nature of representation and reality. One of Picasso's earliest paintings was done in 1903 called The Old Guitarist. He painted this just after the suicide of his close friend. This picture depicts miseries of the poor, ill, and those banished from society. The painting is sympathetic to the life of the repressed. A bent and sightless man holds his large round guitar close to him. The skeleton-like figure has roots from Picasso's native country of Spain. It is thought that the man is playing in the streets of Barcelona. The painting gives off a sad feeling because it is painted in the dark blues, grays, and browns. The water represents the only shift in the color in the painting. The figure is oblivious to his blindness and poverty as he plays his guitar. Some people believe that there are two earlier paintings underneath the image. The images underneath give more understanding of Picasso's artistic process. One of the paintings underneath is notable for the ghostly presence of a woman. Around 1906, Picasso moved away from using gentle and round curves as well as pale colors. He began to use hard, sharp edges and painted almost exclusively in black, gray, and white. One of Picasso's most famous paintings was the huge canvas Le Demois de Vignan, which he painted in 1907. This painting represents not only a radical new face in Picasso's art, but also the beginning of truly modern art. It was one of his first major Cubist works. This painting came from African art. Picasso first saw African art when he visited the Ethnographic Museum in Paris in 1907. All of the five figures in this canvas have mask-like faces. The two on the right are imitative of African sculptures. Around 1910 through 1912, Cubism changed in that the objects represented were completely broken up. Picasso also suggested the idea of Cubism representing a fourth dimension of space. The object were towards the viewer instead of going back and overlapping between planes. Although Brock was the first one to use Papia Colors, Picasso also used the style. Guitar, she music, and glass painted by Picasso in 1912 uses wood grains, newspaper, sheet music, charcoal, and the pasted paper to create an image. The newspaper heading refers to the Balkan Wars, which were going on at that time. The distinct style of Papia Colors can be seen in this painting. In the spring and summer of 1912, Picasso began to bring some color into his paintings. Souvenir de Harvey, painted in May 1912, shows a few splashes of color. Guitar, one of Picasso's first Cubist sculptures, was first done in cardboard in 1912 and then in metal in 1912 through 1913. He made this before his series of Papia Colors. 
Picasso seemed to take more interest in his sculptures as art pieces themselves because he took care to preserve them. In his sculptures, he used mixed materials and many times focused on more than one object. The painting, head decorated with grapes in 1913, showed three of Braque's signature techniques used by Picasso. The grapes, lips, and the lines of fake wood used for the woman's hair. Less generalized, Picasso is riveted by the thing, object to be present in the painting itself, and its very peculiarities or his stimulus. He cares less about the continuity of space around the motif or its relation to the shape of the support. From 1907 to 1914, Picasso and Brock worked very closely in their art and collaborated on paintings almost every night. By the end of 1908, they worked on similar subjects and jointly analyzed the example of Cezanne's work. Bragg later said that they were like two mountaineers roped together. In 1910 through 1912, Picasso and Bragg combined representational motif with letters. Their favorite motifs were lives of musical instruments, bottles, pictures, glasses, newspapers, playing cards, and the human face and figure. In 1911, they began experimenting with shadows and modern stencil typography. Picasso and Brock took objects and reduced them to their simplest form to paint and tried to make them plastic on the page which showed the beauty in simple objects. Picasso begins with an object to paint and works the rest of the painting around the object, while Brock begins with the overall painting and has to make room for his object he's painting to fit in. He's more focused on the paintings as a whole. Both Picasso and Brock deserve the credit for Cubism. Both are great and admirable artists, each in his particular way. Now, Brock's painting is more characterized as tranquil, where Picasso is nervous and turbulent. Ledger began to paint Impressionist paintings by the influence of the artist Edmund Cross. His characteristics of Cubist works were, he chose to use a variety of objects different than the other Cubists and focused on the object's normality and common features. He used more color than some of the other Cubist artists. Ledger believed Cubism involved realism, which he says is the simultaneous ordering of lines, forms, and colors. Before 1910, Ledger used a wide variety of colors, but around 1910, he started using the more traditional Cubist colors as opposed to the Impressionism colors. Many of his paintings were inspired from his view from his window out into the road and overlooking the city. However, Ledger did not always agree with the other Cubist painters like Picasso and Brock. He said, it looks like they painted with spider webs. Ledger's first major piece was called Les Nus dans la Forêt in 1910 to 1911. This painting shows aspects of Cubism like the dark neutral colors and intersecting planes. This painting was done during Ledger's transition from Impressionism to more of a Cubist style. Les Nos, painted in 1911, shows a bride and many people crowded around her in the background. The wedding represents an event that is both contemporary and traditional, portraying Ledger's contrasting commitment to both of these styles. This uses many soft and powdery colors. This painting moved closer to cubism in the way it fragmented linear elements. The arrangements of faceted, interlocking white figures may represent white smoke. The small areas of color go against the more somber colors of the painting. Ledger painted Le Fais Mont Bleu in 1912. This painting marked a change in his paintings. This was one of his first paintings that used bold colors. In 1913, Ledger was given a contract by Con Weiler, who was an art dealer. Conweiler agreed to buy all of Ledger's paintings, and this helped Ledger's reputation spread abroad. Soon after, he was invited to show his paintings at the first autumn salon. In 1913, Ledger began to introduce machine shapes and industrial-looking objects into his paintings. This can be seen as a direct influence from World War I. Before this, Cubism had not seen industrial objects being added to paintings, so this was a change in Cubism. In 1914, Ledger was enlisted in the Army and fought in World War I. When he was on leave from the Army, he came home and painted. Most of his paintings from this time were about the war and the 
atrocities that he saw and experienced. Ledger said, When I was discharged, I could benefit from these hard years. I reached a decision without compromising in any way. I would model in pure and local color using large volumes. The war matured me, and I am not afraid to say so. Ledger painted some during his participation in the war. One of these paintings was called Parte du Carte. This shows a group of soldiers playing cards. The soldiers don't have expressions on their faces and can only be identified by their uniforms and ranks. They are shown as cones, tubes, and barrels. We see more bold colors in this picture, like bright red and yellow. The yellow color represented the gas attacks that Ledger had to be a part of during his time fighting. The fact that the soldiers aren't all in one piece also represents the horrible death that Ledger had to witness during the war. This was a main difference in the painting styles of Picasso and Brock and Ledger. A recurring symbol that can be seen in many of Ledger's pieces is the way he painted the hands in his pictures. In many of his paintings, he paints round hands with long fingers. In this particular painting, we can see a major theme of cubism here, the geometric shapes and intersecting lines. Le soldat la pipe, which translates to a soldier with a pipe in English, is another painting by Ledger that was influenced by his time in the war. This painting is built up of gray vertical planes and diagonal lines. He adds little touches of red to the human body, and the shapes in which the color falls are very geometrical. La Ville, which means city in English, was painted in 1919 after Ledger's return from serving in World War I. The painting portrays an urban environment and the broad panorama of its buildings, scaffolding, and bridges. These architectural elements are very distinct due to such signs of city life as shop window mannequins, rounded plums of smoke, and a telephone pole, all rendered in bold, vibrant colors. Among the array of stenciled letters, one may see the FL, which were Ledger's own initials, that he included in this painting. Ledger also gave this painting a staccato rhythm. The painting produces a sensation of living in or moving through the machine age urban environment. After his second marriage with Nadia Cordes Fitch, they settled in G. Survivet Weiss, where Ledger was then receiving commissions with his status as one of the grand old men of the modern movement. In 1952, Ledger was asked to paint a mural panel for the new United Nations building in New York. Honors came to Ledger after this mural panel. In 1955, he was awarded the Grand Prix at the Bainal in Sao Paulo. Juan Gris's original birth name was Jose Victoriano Gonzalez, but he changed it to Juan Gris, he said, because it sounded more intellectual. In 1906, he sold all his possessions and moved to Paris. He moved out of Spain to move his artist career forward and to escape being drafted into the Spanish military. He entered the Cubism movement after it began, but didn't help create it. In 1908, Gris created his first art piece in Paris, a drawing, and it was published on March 28, 1908, in La Ciette au Bureau. His style at this point was carefree, and he sharpened the features of his pictures and made certain items stand out with clearly defined outlines. In 1911, Grease started to paint in the Cubist art movement. Grease's subject matter was usually his immediate surroundings. He produced still lifes composed of simple, everyday objects, portraits of friends, and occasionally landscapes or cityscapes. He also moved from gouache, painting with opaque watercolors prepared with gum, to regular watercolor at this time. One example of an important piece of art that Juan Gris made during this new part of his artistic career was called Still Life with a Book. This painting has a very clear image. We can tell exactly what's in the painting. We see the objects patched together, but each could also stand alone. In 1911, the year in which Juan Gris spent time with Picasso, he held his first exhibition, showing 15 paintings at a little gallery run by Clovis Sego. His paintings at the little gallery were well received by those whose opinion he respected, and he was sufficiently encouraged to send three paintings to the Salon des Independents in the spring of 1912. In October of 1912, 
Juan showed his work in the Section Door exhibition with other artists, Marcusi, Glaze, and Metzinger. During the analytic cubism years, Greece incorporated many violins and guitars in its paintings, and many of them we can recognize for what they are. However, around this time, Picasso and Brack were moving more toward an abstract approach to cubism, and many of the motifs they used could not be clearly defined or seen. Greece painted more logically in cubism. However, some people believe that Greece may have been a step behind the cubist technique of Picasso and Brack, because in many instances, Picasso and Brack pioneered a technique or particular style, and Greece was soon to follow. It was in 1912 when he officially began to join the cubism movement. He stayed more towards analytic cubism and was conservative compared to Picasso and Brack. However, at this time the analytic period was ending, and this made him fall behind the other painters a bit. In Juan Grace's painting Guitar and Flowers, which he painted in 1912, we can see a change in his painting technique since 1911. It became a little more abstract and he used more of the breaking apart of objects and re-piecing them that we see in synthetic cubism. However, in this painting we can still tell what the objects are. Another painting in 1912 was Portrait of Picasso. Picasso is about six years older than Juan Gris, and Gris admired him as a mentor through painting. However, Picasso was not as fond of Gris, and some even recall that Picasso seemed to view Gris as inferior in his painting. Still, Gris shows a strong respect and admiration for Picasso in this painting. Picasso is seen here with his painting palette in hand. The colors typical of the analytic phase of cubism can be seen. Neutral colors like brown, gray, and black are used. Picasso's head and body are also a culmination of fractured planes, and this is typical of cubism. Juan Gris's work was evolving rapidly. He had used papier-colle and collage as soon as it was invented by Brack and Picasso in 1912. The invention of these techniques liberated Juan's compositional sense, and this helped him to evolve the subtler patterns of overlapping planes, characteristic of his more mature work. By 1913, there was a synthesis going on in the Cubism movement. Synthesis, in this case, meaning a blending or simplifying. We can see this in Greece's work through his new use of breaking apart objects even further than before. However, still not as much as Picasso and Brock. Gertrude Stein and Leonce Rosenberg bought paintings from Juan Gris in 1913. Also in 1913, Kahnweiler, who was an art dealer, offered Gris a contract, which he accepted. Since Brock and Picasso were not at this time showing their work, the section door was the public face of cubism. Gris was very gifted at painting, and he attracted the attention both of the dealers and of the well-informed collectors. In 1914, Juan Gris painted a picture called The Breakfast. This was a collage that included multiple cubist techniques that we've talked about earlier. First, Gris uses collage to piece together objects on the table, displaying a scene. He uses a few different textures and sticks with neutral colors. However, the background is a shade of teal blue. In addition to this, he includes a motif of the newspaper heading. This is another common theme in his works. We can make out that the heading would read Le Journal, if we could read the whole thing. We also have seen newspapers and newspaper headings in some of Picasso and Brock's work. During this time, Juan Gris also used the green wood technique that Brock used earlier in some of his paintings. In 1915, Gris began to branch out in the colors he chose to use. He chose the colors based on what objects he painted. He wanted the color to represent the picture and show emotion. This is interesting because at this time, Around many other cubist artists Greece also painted began neutral to colors, a checkerboard and design even into used his paintings. Mainly grays, blacks, One example of a typical painting from around 1915 
is called checkerboard. We can see the techniques that Greece used at this time in this picture, like the branching out in his use of color and the checkerboard motif. Greece also paints playing cards. Playing cards are a favorite motif that many of the Cubist artists included. In 1916, World War I can be seen as an influence in Greece's work. His paintings suddenly appear more solemn, and he goes back to using mainly blacks and grays. Common objects he used to use in his paintings, like the checkerboard, playing cards, and musical instruments, are not seen as often. This type of cubism can also be called tenebrous cubism. In 1916 and 1917, Greece began to paint a few more portraits and landscapes, even though landscapes weren't as common in Cubism as still lifes. His painting, called Landscape Bolio, painted in 1917, uses many greens, blues, and blacks. Another similar painting was also done in 1917, and it's called Sideboard. This uses many of the same colors, as well as brings back the use of wood. Some of Greece's paintings at this time may have been influenced by his personal life. During this time, it is documented that he was going through a rough time, and this, along with the impact and shock of World War I going on around him, influenced Greece's return to his use of darker colors. In 1919, Juan Gris moved yet further away from still lifes, and the majority of his paintings were of harlequins, which were characters in masks and costumes, and Pierrot's, a French male character who dressed in white clothing and had a white powdery face. His painting called Harlequin with Guitar, which was done in 1919, shows a harlequin playing the guitar. Gris moves back to using warmer colors, although not bright colors. The harlequin is fractured in different planes, still true to the techniques of cubism. After around 1920, when Greece became ill, he started to paint less and began traveling more. His paintings began to move away from cubism, and by 1922, he seemed to be done painting in a cubist style. Although, in 1925, Greece had his first exhibition and the only one in his lifetime outside of France. In painting, the several sources of Cubist inspiration included the later work of Cezanne. The geometric forms and compressed picture space in his paintings appealed especially to Brock, who developed them in his own works. African sculpture, particularly mask carvings, had enormous influence in the early years of the movement. Picasso's Demoiselle de Yvonne is one of the most significant examples of this influence. Within this revolutionary composition lay much of the basic material of Cubism. Seen as the starting point for, or an essential element in, several other modern art movements including Futurism, Orphism, Fordicism, Constructivism, and Purism were all influenced by Cubism. When Pablo Picasso started creating his masterpieces, a lot of people had never seen anything like it. They were amazed and a little horrified, but soon found it comforting. People bought Picasso's paintings. He was considered a genius. Although Cubism groups were largely dispersed after World War I, their collective break from visual realism had an enriching and decisive influence on the in development of the 20th century art. It provided a new stylistic vocabulary and a technical idiom that remain forceful today.